Hello, it's Peter Wright and Kathleen Beauvais in Ontario, Canada, with episode number 58 of the Yacking Show. We're making history today because the first time we're broadcasting our show with a little bit of snow still on the ground from a, the first snowfall of the winter. Uh, and our guests are smiling because it's a lot warmer where they are, but you'll hear more about that in a moment. <laughs> so this is, this is where we talk about life, business, and more, and we try and bring you tips and ideas for a changing world. And we do that by bringing interesting guests to talk to you and that you can see, and they tell you their stories. And today is no exception. You're going to be blown away with our guests today. But it's Kathleen's job to introduce them. So first, let me welcome Kathleen. Hi, Kathleen. Good to see you here again. Hello, Peter. Thanks. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I'm so excited, Peter. I don't often, as you know, don't often get the jitters when I do a podcast, but I have to tell you, I have the jitters today. <laughs> because I'm just so blown away. I'm so in awe of this power couple. Oh, so, but first, thank you all for joining us. We so appreciate you and always appreciate your comments. So do please keep them coming. And if anyone out there is interested in becoming a guest on our show, please don't hesitate to reach out to Peter or myself. So Peter, oh my gosh, I've had the jitters all day over this podcast. I'm, I, I oh, just listen to this, this couple. They are Dr. Dina Preston Ortiz and her husband, Don Ortiz. They are musicians that have performed in 43 countries with their company, DEO Entertainment Group. They are speakers. They have taught and worked with um, corporations as well as entrepreneurs and small business owners from all over the world. They help with business development, team development, sales, marketing. Uh, I mean, they have performed for the U.S. Department of Defense, the U.S. State Department, along with a multitude of Fortune 500 companies, and we have them here today. <laughs> I'm so excited. You know what? I could probably go on for the entire 30 minutes just listing off their awards and accolades, but without further ado, welcome, Don and Dina. How are you? Hey, Kathleen. Thank oh, you. Oh, wonderful. Great to be here. Special shout out to your listeners as well. And thank you and Peter so much for having us. We're, we're really excited about being here too. Well, listen, I think I let the cat out of the bag a little bit and giving a little bit of a background uh, about uh, the both of you. But please, can you tell our audience a little bit more about your background and where you've been and where you are going? Sure, you bet. So I actually started as a street musician. I um, left my hometown of uh, Phoenix, Arizona uh, when I was 18 and I wanted to go to Berkeley, which is in San Francisco, near San Francisco, California. So um, I was supposed to hop on a plane or supposed to take my car, but my car broke down and I ended up hopping on a plane, which took away any money I had left to get into San Francisco. And I actually ended up in an area called the Tenderloins, which is a fairly uh, rough area in San Francisco pretty much landed with very little money and um, found out that I wasn't going to be able to get into Berkeley right away because of being an um, out-of-state student, which would have cost me, you know, double the tuition. So I ended up uh, going to state college and in between uh, classes up at City College in San Francisco, I made my living busking in front of Ripley's, believe it or not, right in front of uh, Fisherman's Wharf. So that's how I got started, literally with my guitar case open. <laughs> Um, I moved uh, out of San Francisco down to San Diego, started uh, my own uh, country rock band. We did really, really well, and I ended up going on tour um, across um, the U.S. and actually Canada. We've toured Canada quite a bit. And um, I lost a guitar and steel player, and I met Don Ortiz in Phoenix. I stopped at my parents' house to rest a little bit, and... Um, the rest is history, I guess she's <laughs> And Don, your background? Yeah, it's, um, it's really wild. I was uh, working for a production company uh, when somebody had kept on telling, actually our lighting director kept on telling us about Dina. And he said, Don, you should uh, really listen to this gal. She's got an incredible voice. It's not like anything that's out there. And I think you would do justice and be in their group. And so after about a month of him telling me, uh, finally he brought a cassette of Dina. And I, so I met her voice first, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that's a unique way to meet somebody as a trademark uh, through her voice. And instantly I thought of Bonnie Raitt meets Melissa Etheridge, uh, you know, it very, very top-notch vocals. So I said, uh, let's arrange that meeting. And here we are 31 years later, 
26 wow. world tours in 43 countries uh, as ambassadors of goodwill. But we really did start. I mean, both of us really did pretty much start you know, from the very bottom, like most entrepreneurs do. And that's what our book is really about. I mean, we literally started from 31 cents. Yeah. 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 You know? Wow. Yeah. So but, I, <coughs> sorry, Kathleen, carry I, on. I just wanted to jump in because I introduced Dr. Dina Preston Ortiz. So Dr. Preston Ortiz, you actually have a doctorate in business administration, correct? I do. And, and I actually started, um, Don and I, like many uh, small business owners and entrepreneurs, um, actually, I would say, got taken early in our um, business, and I financially got taken advantage of, and I swore that was never going to happen again. So I went back to school and got my MBA, and when I was done with my MBA, um, which was great because I started, you know, not only being able to apply all these new theories, but, you know, um, take the information we, we were already doing as small business owners and tweak it so that it was better. But um, my brother reached out to me and, and he was already teaching at um, university and he said, hey, why don't you go back to school and teach and um, you can pay back some of your student loans. So I hopped on board, I thought that was a great idea. I could teach part-time um, graduate students. And from there, I, I, wow, I loved it. I mean, it's a, it was a second career for me. And I didn't do that until late, late, late in my thirties. Um, and then they asked me to stay. And once they asked me to stay, really uh, the best way to move up in academia is to get, you know, go forward and get your doctorate. Right. Once I got my doctorate, the U.S. State Department reached out to us uh, and said, hey, you're already flying over here and doing shows for us on behalf of the U.S. State Department and U.S. Global Embassies. Now that you have your doctorate, how do you feel about teaching um, classes in marketing, management, small business entrepreneurship? I mean, I'm, I'm doing that all. I can do that in my sleep. So I said, absolutely. So now we started doing the workshops and the, you know, teaching small business owners how to start and develop their businesses. Because as you know, most of us enter the field. We, I mean, we have a love for what we're doing, but we don't necessarily know business. Mm -hmm. And so that really makes, at least for me, that really makes a difference. Especially since we work on a global palette. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't know how to reach out overseas and how to do business in a virtual environment it's much different than doing business in your hometown or your community yeah. um so being able to enlighten those and inspire and turn that key on it's essential and yeah. some small business owners will say you know i'm local i really don't have global you know there's no global business but truthfully and i'm sure you know this with technology the internet everybody's a global business because you're Absolutely. competing with you're competing with people that have products and services across the globe that can get them to your clients pretty quickly. Yep. So they're really, truly now all global. And as Don shared, we've been working in virtual environments really with the State Department and even Department of Defense, you know, as way back as 1993. So we've been doing this a really long time. And actually, Dina is a pioneer of online uh, teaching as well. Yeah. So uh -huh. she's one of the very first ones that was, you know, producing and putting together classes online for that that industry long before the virtual environment really came about. Yeah, I think Started, first, yeah. Yeah. yeah I think wow. it was nineteen eighty eight. So a good twenty years. Very good. Very good. So you, you mentioned being taken advantage of financially. So I, I got your book and I started reading it. I haven't finished it, but I'm really interested in it and I find it intriguing. Right, Dina, right at the start of your career, when you went to that rough part of San Francisco, you got taken advantage of financially at the point of a knife, didn't you? <laughs> your book. Well, well, yeah, that was, that was a different experience. Um, yes, 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 definitely. Um, Luckily, we moved out of there pretty quickly. I moved out of there pretty quickly and moved into Polk Street, which um, was also had its rough edges. There are a lot of runaways there, but it was still a much cleaner environment, and I was much safer there than I was in the Tenderloin. Uh, sure. But I, like my book says, I learned a lot about business, believe it or not. When you're on the streets, you learn a lot about business. Yeah. As yep. a street musician, I learned a lot about business, you know? I bet you did. I bet you did. And uh, you, you've answered the question I was going to ask you, which was how did you combine the, your interests and passion in the music world with business? But you've answered that very well, the way you met and all that. So the next one I wanted to ask you was your, your whole lives and careers took, took a turn serendipitously, if that's the right word, when, you missed a, when your plane booking was mixed up and you were stranded in Singapore 
yes. with the with the <laughs> worrying idea you might end up in Japan, not able to get out of the ba the Air Force Base. But with uh, uh, so like literally, literally minutes to spare, you turned that around, and it started you, in fact, on, on a huge part of your touring and your career, didn't it? Do you want to talk about that for a moment? Yeah, I'll, I'll let Don do it because he actually this is uh, Don's story. But yeah, absolutely, it's it's our first uh, one of our first chapters in the book, and that's. Yeah figuring out how to uh, take advantage of things that you don't expect so that you can find different ways to um, develop products and services. And it happened on our very first tour out. Right. So, you know, that, that was not like we had a couple tours or mishaps under our belt in that kind of situation. And uh, asking the load master, you know, he goes, so who do you know in Singapore? And I said, what, what do you mean? He goes, well, this is where everything's going. I said, no, 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 no. We're supposed to be going to California. He goes, not this flight. This is going directly <laughs> to Singapore. And then we're moving on to Japan. And I just, I was just like, oh my gosh, we have to figure this out right now. So I went back and told Dina, I said, don't tell the rest of the band, but this is what's <laughs> happening right now. And we got to figure this out since we hit the ground. At that point, we were literally, literally going to be living on the plane because we had no visas to get into Singapore. We sure. had no visas headed to Japan. Yeah, you come so you become somebody without a country basically. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And, you know, Over so to Kathleen. <laughs> so what yeah, I mean, to turn all these around at the end of our chapters for takeaways is really essential and that's why we tell these stories because they've become part of the success that was chaos. Yep. Yeah. Right. Well, given the current world events with the pandemic and i know that you work with entrepreneurs you work with large corporations as well but you know in this in this environment and personally just looking at our own community here a lot of the small businesses and entrepreneurs are being decimated right now mm -hmm. conversely the big corporations many of them are flourishing <sighs> What is your advice? Do you have any advice for those entrepreneurs and small business owners out there? Is What is the hope for them? What do they... So one, of, one of the things, Kathleen, that we have to do as small business owners is that we cannot get stuck. We can't get stuck in the same thing over and over again. That's something else we learned really early. You have to be able to be ahead of the curve anywhere between two to three months out. Our jobs and we forget this sometimes, is to grow our business. We always need to be growing our business. So the first um, issue in our business that we hit was a great recession back in 2008, 2009. So we had to figure out another way to make a living because we're the, in the events industry. And you know when you're in the events industry, the first thing to go is entertainment. Yeah. So no one's going to hire entertainment. Mm -hmm. So we had to figure out another way to get around that, just like we do now. Um, so you have to look for other services or products. If you, for example, if you're servicing a pool and you clean pools and uh, the Great Recession hits, instead of cleaning pools because people no longer can afford to fill the pools, keep them clean, you then go into the service of covering pools. And so that's another business service that you can offer um, as a small business. You have to be very nimble and flexible, especially in this world of constant change. And you've got to be able to look and be creative to find those products and services. So right now, um, you know, Don and I primarily, we make our money through live entertainment or speaking. Once COVID hit, most of, pretty much all of our gigs were wiped out. I mean, that was a significant amount Absolutely. of money for us. Mm -hmm. So we rolled out our book. We are, the book was in the works. We rolled it out about three months early than, than what we had planned. We got the book out. We got our album out early um, and some other things so that we can go ahead and come up with another income stream. Really working on the brand. I mean, this is the time to make your brand awareness stand out ahead of everybody else and find out what your best product is maybe in your business. Uh, is that your money maker? Maybe you need to turn your shift that way. Uh, so you might have to change your product line a little bit. You might have to change the way you're marketing things or maybe just up your marketing side so people see that you haven't lost face and that you're still a trustworthy brand that they have come to know and you're still there. Another thing that right. you can do is couple with other organizations or other businesses that have similar products or services that you can piggyback on each other. So we're constantly referring back and forth to other people that actually, if you look at the distribution chain, um, we're both at the same level. We're both horizontal, um, let's say, re retailers, but I send customers to them when I can't service them, and they send customers to me. 
and yep. or I've got a superior product that they don't have and so it goes back and forth you have to have a lot of trust in those types of relationships but there but that's definitely a great way to go right so great. a lot of collaboration mm-hmm. yeah it's so uh, def- people have to change their mindset don't they 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 really have to pivot and switch gears and yeah I, I've got one which is sort of an extension of Kathleen's question I I as you can see from the gray beard, I've been around for a few years and I've, I've had uh, my own businesses, uh, employed lots of people, few people, worked for the court in the corporate world and uh, been up and down because I lived in Africa. And Africa, as you know from your visits there, is, is a volatile place to live and do business in. Yes. It's all great fun. And I've, I've really, over the years, tried to determine what makes one person successful and someone else who's had exactly the same or a better start with all the resources, all the connections, and they're not successful. Where's the key? What do you think is the key? In all the work you've done with people, businesses, and organizations, what's the one factor that sets the successful apart from the ones who don't get as successful? So there, I think there's a couple of attributes from my perspective, okay. and Don can share his. Uh, first and foremost, you have to love what you do. So mm. I'm a musician. It's in my heart. It's never going to go away. I'm always going to do it. So in order to take advantage of that, I had to find a way to make a living. So um, I had to capitalize on my talent. I had to get better at what I did. I had a natural gift already, but I had to study and learn how to do it better. That's one way. Make the most of your gifts so that you can capitalize on your own talent. If you're doing that, there's a spiritual connection to it that you're going to stick with it no matter what. So perseverance. Secondly, um, you have to be smart. You have to be strategic and you have to continue, especially in this day and age, you have to continue to go to school. Not, it may not even be formal school, but if you don't understand data analytics right now, if you don't understand uh, how technology can support your marketing and support what you're doing in terms of management, um, the chances of you being successful and overtaken by another company is probably out there so you need to be aware you need to be knowledgeable continue to going to school so lifelong learning is is my other um key um takeaway from that and then the bigger part is it's also relationship building yeah, for sure. not right. only do you you know you keep your clients uh once you get them that's long term but also do they refer you uh do they see a value in having you uh, be a part of their function, a part of their uh, uh, their setting or business. And Dean and I really have uh, been fortunate enough to have 30 years of clients. And a lot of our clients, as you know, once they go to another area of corporate market, they take you with them. They do. Uh, yep. And yep. we've had people take us all over the world, uh, literally. Um, and that's been a really part. And of course, having a great product that always is accountable, that they see is not just uh, something that's fun, but every single time that you're there, it's over and above what you really said you were gonna do and put out there. Yeah, so not just the tangible product or service, but also that you're delivering uh, quality beyond what their expectation is. You really absolutely have to provide value. And sometimes that's through expertise. So, you know, we make sure the music, the musicians we use, that we're always on top of stuff and, you know, that we present an excellent experience for our clients. But before we even meet and do the show, Don is meeting with the client pre-show to give them information, advice based on his production history so that their event is the best it can possibly be. And he gives that advice away and expertise away for free. That's something else that small business owners can do as well. And I think clients appreciate that. They do because you're really helping him make it a turnkey situation for them. So when they're sitting at the table, it runs itself. That's when you see the confidence that you've hired the right people to make your event successful. Right. You become the expert and you share that expertise with your clients. And I love it. And um, I just want to jump in because one of the things that uh, I'm a member of the Chamber of Commerce for our our local community And there's a lot of people out there that are entrepreneurs. And one of the things that they forget to do or are intimidated in doing is asking for a referral. And (laughs) it's true, isn't it? Because people are just too, uh, too uncomfortable with it. What would you say to that? And how do you, how would you ask for a referral or even a testimonial? You know what? I tell people, get your asking gear. (laughs) Literally. 
it, it's it's a hard thing for people but if you don't ask you don't know it's you know that not. simple sure. and you don't get or receive so uh for me the first thing is i always ask for a referral i always do a great follow-up with our clients and that really becomes your referral list that when they're writing you back how excellent their event was how how you were over the top you know uh all those come back to you i was going to say to kathleen i'm so glad you brought that up because yeah. uh, one of the other things on top of the myriad of other things we have to do uh, is we have to be able to sell our product and a lot of small business owners are not comfortable with sales yep. so if you're not comfortable with sales i recommend that you absolutely take a sales class um, because you have to be comfortable with no. And remember, every single no you get, it's a numbers game. You're closer to a yes. We literally, Don makes at least 10 to 15 calls every single day, oh. even though we've been around forever. Yeah, and I, I, I see no as next opportunity. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You have to turn it around to a positive. I mean, yep. that's the thing when you're a business owner. Those first seven years of your business are the hardest years that you'll ever have. And if they say no, don't take it personally. It could be budget. It could be buying time. Maybe they're not in their buying cycle. Maybe you're not the right, uh, right product or service for that particular client. And maybe you can recommend another product or service to them, which is great because they'll remember that you cared sure. more about their need than you did about making a buck. Yep. And that's really important too. That, that last one is very important. And what yes. is How do you not get discouraged on? How do you not get discouraged from the no's? And how do you, uh, what advice would you give to people out there that, you know, no, 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 and they're, they're waiting for that yes to come, but they're just, you know. They're I, I figured out a long time ago that it, it, it used to take, you know, 50 calls to get a yes. You have to know that. You have to know what your number game is every day. So if you know you have to make 50 calls to get a yes, how many calls do you really need to make, make it successfully? You know, you have to be your own will and perseverance person out there because nobody can drive you but you. But if you can remember to make these little steps every day, like knowing how to put all your information on different platforms, you should always own your own information area, whether it's a Google or your Instagram or Facebook um, or your own website. Dean and I, we, we really do everything ourselves in, in house. Because we found when you do events and things like that, nobody could keep up with us. Whether we were playing for the for a special events last night or this evening, how do people get that up quickly enough? And how do you make that market and people want to utilize your brand again tomorrow? And once yeah. you get large enough to uh, Kathleen, you can always bring, um, and Peter, you can always bring a sales team in. I mean, it's expensive, but there's a lot of mid-sized companies that actually get to that point. Sure. Mm -hmm. They're able to bring you know, a two or three person sales team in to do that phone calling for them. And there's so many great technology tools and CRM systems right now that help with that process. Uh, but it really is, Don's right, it's a numbers game. And, you know, we're used to, no, we're used to, we don't like you. Remember, we're in the arts and art, regardless yeah. of your talent, is very subjective. So we get a lot of, no, we don't like it. No, I don't like your voice. No, I don't like the music you're doing. No, you're not the right. So we're, we're kind of used to that. You just cannot take it personally. Then so I can refer. Right. And I'm still seeing the client. They still have a great time. They got what they wanted. Sure. And we kept a relationship, which is more long lasting. Yeah. I, I've got to reinforce what you're saying on relationships, Don. Uh, as I said, I lived in Africa for most of my life. I came to North America at the age of 55. And this is not my show. It's not my story. So I don't want to go into detail. I'll just let, let me tell you, I came here with virtually nothing because of problems in Africa. And uh, the thing I missed the most was not having that network of contacts that people who don't move continent have built up their whole life. So I had no one I'd been to school with, no one I'd been to university with, no one I'd played sport with, no one I'd been in the military with, no one I'd worked with, and I'm trying to get a business going. You know what a handicap, I'm not looking for pity, but yes. it's just reinforcing what you're saying. You really need to nurture your relationships because you never know when you might need them and when you can help them. So that, that was a big lesson for me. Yeah. Absolutely. It, it's been, I mean, we, we met a, an individual actually uh, in Azerbaijan. Mm -hmm. And when they went to another post, we went to Budapest. When they went to another post, post they took us to Fiji and Caribbean. I mean, it's been a growing journey for us to go from a band, the Dina Preston band, to becoming uh, ambassadors of goodwill, to becoming keynote speakers, 
and teaching entrepreneurship and outsourcing and business abroad. Amazing. Very and, good. And by the way, Dina, I can't imagine people saying they don't like your voice because I've listened to the <laughs> on your website and you just are amazing. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, oh, that's so funny. Absolutely. And absolutely. So online, taking your business online, um, I'm noticing a lot more musicians are doing the same thing, taking their entertainment online as well. Is that something that you're also going, or maybe you're already doing? We do have our um, our music online, but we use that more as a calling card okay. uh, than we do actually for now for payment because we really the money for us the big money for us the you know pay your mortgage, pay your players, run a business money is really working in the corporate industry sure. um, and, with, and with the government. There really is no money in bars. We love bars, you know. Uh, 30, 29, 30, 40, 30 years yeah, ago, thirty years ago, because we both figured out pretty quickly we couldn't raise a family on that. And so luckily there's a huge meeting and event industry here in Arizona. And we just, you know, we kind of tapped into it. Well, it helps um, that we have the Grand Canyon in our backyard. Of course. Yeah, yeah. It really does. You know, so a lot of people come from all over the world to here, uh, whether it's the Grand Canyon, Sedona, or the, the Mariachis or the Cowboys and Indians that they, they fantasized when they were kids, you know, Native <laughs> Americans. Uh, it, it's, you know, for us, in fact, that's how we got one of our, uh, uh, big our tours. First, actually, our first State Department tour, I think, official State Department tour was uh, through a Native American group that goes out quite a bit for the State Department, and they recommended that we go. So, yeah, again, back and forth, the relationship. Relationship. Yep, absolutely. You, <clears throat> you're, you're right. You're part of the world. I, I'm thinking Las Vegas, but that's not that far from you, is it, Las Vegas? Because about four hours. No, it's about a couple four or five hours, hours drive. Yeah. About an hour flight. Okay, my, my son works for a big insurance company in Canada, and they had a management conference, and it was at Las Vegas. Because when you said Grand Canyon, I thought, well, why, what's that ring a bell? And he said to me that uh, their company has lots of conferences in Las Vegas. So uh, yeah. Grand Canyon was a big attraction for all the delegates to go off and see the Grand Canyon. So Absolutely. Nice, uh, nice part of, of the world. It's beautiful. As you know, the climate is perfect. Right now, today, it's going to be 95. Wow, so, I can't believe it. We're <laughs> sitting at, at three centigrade, which is, uh, yeah. I guess, 41, maybe Fahrenheit. You know, with our first, you know, uh, yes, turtlenecks. I, I, <laughs> I did my first, uh, my band out of San Diego, my, my first uh, band out of San Diego did our first international tour in Canada. And we didn't know any better. And we took a tour <laughs> from Thunder Bay in the middle of January. Oh, 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 oh my goodness. Yeah, and we, had, we were not prepared. We didn't have the clothes. Wow. Southern California, we didn't have the clothes. We didn't, oh my gosh. It was still a fun tour, but I will never forget that tour. Ever. That's, in fact, they get a lot colder than we do up there. Yeah, yeah. We are, we're getting close to the end of our time. So we don't want to lose the opportunity. Please, uh, between you, tell, tell our listeners and viewers how they can contact you so that our corporate viewers can reach out to you for workshops, training, and small businesses as well. What's the best way to contact you? Well, thank you uh, for asking. I think the best way to reach us is probably our website, which is uh, DEO, D is in dog, E is in Edward, O is in Oscar, speaks.com. Or you can contact uh, Don directly. He's got a business phone and his number is 623-330-0267. Or you can email us at deoproductions, plural, at yahoo.com. And also, if you'd like to hear our music and new album, dinaprestonband.com, D-I-N-A, prestonband.com. Excellent, excellent. Excellent. We will and put you can that hear on. our music on your favorite platforms, whether it's Spotify, Pandora, YouTube. You can go and see our music videos. Uh, they're all up. We have a brand new album out called Field of Blue. And, of course, our book, 31 Cents to 43 Countries, Hardcore Tips to Increasing Profits, available on Amazon. And also an audio book. Very and good. And <laughs> and I'll endorse that for you because I got I downloaded the Kindle and uh, I'm really enjoying it. I haven't got so I think a couple of chapters in, but it's it's great. Um, and I really like the way you tell your story and then you put the takeaways at the end of the chapter for people to pick up on. So that's I appreciate that. Excellent, excellent. Well, and, we definitely uh, look forward to hearing your feedback and your thoughts uh, as you've come to a close with our book as well. Yeah. 
I will let you know. And uh, I would like to think in a couple of months' time, perhaps we could get you back again if you have a slot in your calendar because there's so much more you could you could <laughs> tell our audience. We just can't get into a 30-minute session. And uh, that's the way we keep the shows at 30 minutes. So I've got a – it's really great meeting you and hearing your stories. I'm going to hand back to Kathleen to do her a little bit. Well, right. Cheers thank to you. So Stay much. safe and healthy, Peter, my friend, you. Peter. <laughs> Thank you both so much for joining us today. We so appreciate it. And of course, we appreciate all of you for tuning in. As always, please keep your comments coming. We read all of them. And if anyone out there is interested in becoming a guest on our show, please don't hesitate to reach out to Peter or myself. And until next time, take care, everyone. Bye-bye.